Imagine a group of knights so powerful and secretive that their influence is still felt and speculated upon nearly a thousand years later. Welcome to the world of the Knights Templar, an order that emerged from the shadows in 1119 AD, shrouded in an aura of mystery and intrigue. These were not your ordinary knights, they were monks and warriors, bound by a vow to protect Christian pilgrims journeying to the Holy Land during the tumultuous era of the Crusades. This initial goal, however, is just a small part of the Templars' fascinating story. Over time, they grew into a formidable force, accumulating vast wealth and power, and inevitably stirring up a whirlwind of suspicion and controversy. Their secretive nature, coupled with their rapid rise to prominence, continues to fuel speculation and countless theories about their true intentions and hidden treasures. So, who were these enigmatic knights, and what secrets did they hold? From humble beginnings, the Templars rose to become one of the most powerful organizations in the Christian world. The Templars, formerly known as the Poor Fellow Soldiers of Christ and of the Temple of Solomon, were initially a small group of knights sworn to protect Christian pilgrims traveling to the Holy Land. Their dedication and discipline caught the attention of the Catholic Church, which officially recognized them in 1129. This recognition marked a turning point for the Templars. Suddenly, they had the backing of the most influential institution of the time. The Church's endorsement not only legitimized the Templars, but also granted them special privileges. They were exempted from all taxes, allowed to build their own oratories, and were not subject to any local laws. These privileges helped the Templars grow exponentially. With growth came wealth. Donations poured in from all corners of Europe, including land, farming estates, and even entire villages. The Templars became so rich, in fact, they established their own network of banks, offering loans to monarchs and managing vast estates. They were no longer just a military order. They had become a financial powerhouse. But the Templars were not only about wealth, they were formidable warriors too. They played a crucial role in the Crusades, the series of religious wars sanctioned by the Church. Their distinct red cross on a white mantle became a symbol of hope for Christians and a sign of impending doom for their enemies. Their military prowess was unmatched. The Templars were the shock troops in every major engagement, often turning the tide of battles. They were the epitome of the warrior monk, feared in battle and respected in society. However, the Templars' rapid ascent was not without its challenges. Their increasing influence and wealth began to draw envy and suspicion from both the Church and secular powers. Moreover, their secretive nature and initiation rites gave rise to rumors and speculation. But with great power often comes great controversy, and the Templars were no exception. Rumors and mysteries swirled around the Templars, casting a shadow over their shining armor. The Knights Templar, once the most powerful military order of the Middle Ages, were not immune to controversy. Their rapid rise to prominence and their vast wealth stirred up a cauldron of suspicion and envy. But it was the accusations of heresy that truly sent shockwaves through the Christian world. The Templars were accused of denying Christ, worshipping idols, and even engaging in secret, forbidden rituals. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, these allegations tarnished their once untouchable reputation. Yet, the controversies didn't stop there. Rumors of hidden treasures took flight, setting imaginations ablaze. It was said that the Templars had found and hidden the legendary treasures of the Temple of Solomon. Some even whispered that they had discovered the Holy Grail, the cup used by Christ at the Last Supper, and the Ark of the Covenant, the chest containing the tablets of the Ten Commandments. These tales, though unverified, added an aura of mystery and intrigue to the Templars, feeding the public's fascination and fear. Then came the conspiracy theories. The Templars, with their secret initiation rites and their close-knit brotherhood, were ripe for speculation. Some believed they were the guardians of the Holy Grail, others theorized they were the keepers of the Ark of the Covenant. These theories, while romantic and captivating, lacked hard evidence, yet they have endured, fueling countless books, films, and debates. All these controversies and conspiracies did more than just tarnish the image of the Templars. They also attracted the unwanted attention of powerful forces, including the King of France and the Pope. The Templars, once untouchable, were now viewed with suspicion and fear. The whispers of scandal, of heresy, of hidden treasures and secret relics became too loud to ignore. As the whispers grew, so did the scrutiny, leading to their downfall. In 1307, the sun began to set on the Templars' reign, marked by arrests, trials, and executions. The year was 1307. The once mighty and revered Templars found themselves at the mercy of King Philip IV of France. With a kingdom deeply in debt, largely due to wars with England, 
King Philip eyed the Templars' vast wealth. To consolidate control and wipe out his debts, he orchestrated a plot against the Templars. In the early hours of Friday, October 13, 1307, a date that would go down in infamy, orders were carried out across France. The Templars, including their grandmaster Jacques de Molay, were arrested on charges of heresy, idolatry, and other heinous crimes. This was the beginning of the end for the Templars. Under the watchful eye of King Philip, the Templars were subjected to brutal trials. Many confessed under torture to the alleged crimes. The confessions, however genuine or induced, sealed their fate. The Templars were found guilty. The penalty was severe. The order was disbanded by Pope Clement V, and many Templars, including de Molay, were burnt at the stake, marking a tragic end to this powerful order. As the flames climbed higher, legend has it that de Molay cursed King Philip and Pope Clement, declaring that they would meet him before God's tribunal within a year. Spooky coincidence or the power of a Templar's curse, both King Philip and Pope Clement did die within a year of de Molay's execution. But did the Templars truly vanish, or did they simply fade into the shadows, their secrets intact? The suppression of the Templars may have marked the end of their official order, but rumors have persisted that the Templars went underground, their secrets passed on, their legacy living on in secret societies around the world. The Templars' story doesn't end here. It simply disappears into the realm of mystery and intrigue. Though the Templars were officially disbanded, their legacy lived on, shrouded in mystery and ripe for speculation. The Templar footprint can be traced through the centuries, from the masons and sculptors who inherited their symbols, to the founding fathers of America who, some say, were influenced by Templar ideals. Even today, the Templars are a source of intrigue and fascination, their enigmatic history providing ample fodder for books, films, and even video games. Their portrayal in popular culture often leans towards the sensational, with tales of hidden treasures, lost relics, and clandestine rituals. Yet these thrilling narratives only serve to deepen the enigma, blurring the line between fact and fiction. And as for the secrets they guarded, well, those remain as elusive as ever. The Templars' cryptic codes and crypts continue to puzzle historians and treasure hunters alike. So we are left to wonder, what other secrets did the Knights Templar take to their supposed graves, and will we ever uncover the full truth of their extraordinary history?